So, okay, I'm gonna start. Um, first of all, thank you so much for coming. Uh, it's really nice, uh, and it's, we are very happy to be here in, in Denver uh, in the frame of uh, East Denver and Build Week. Um, we are gonna talk about smart contracts, solidity. Uh, if we are gonna share with you the information to create your first app uh, in RSK. Uh, we are from a company named IOB Labs. Uh, we are several, many companies together as IOB Labs. I am part of RSK. Uh, Sol is also from RSK. And Wojtek is from Rift. Uh, do you want to say something, guys? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys. Uh, we are from different countries, so we want to come up with our office. It's a private city here, and uh, I think it's, it's a good time to do. We have a lot of uh, interesting things to show people. So where are you from? I'm from Brazil. Which part of Brazil? Sao Paulo. I'm from Czech Republic, but I've been yeah, I'm, I'm from Mexico City, born and raised, uh, but five years ago I went to the rabbit hole of Bitcoin and then I realized like I have to learn English and I think the best way, uh, yeah, that, it was that I learned uh, Cyrillic and Russian, I was like, no, I can learn English. And then I moved here, uh, I lived in Chicago for two years and now I live in San Francisco where I am part of this team. Also, we are uh, hiring. Uh, you can see in your table is one of those. Uh, uh, we, ha we are hiring different uh, positions, not only developers. Yeah, this is, that is the commercial. <laughs> yeah, and... Are those on Hopolis as well? Second? The Hopolis? You should listen. Yes. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Hopolis. And um, we know how important is, is Denver for the blockchain. It's a blockchain hub. There is amazing companies doing amazing things. It's an extraordinary community uh, like Dan and his team is doing an amazing job in Torado. Uh, and this is the reason we are here because we know how important is Denver in the blockchain space. Um, I'm gonna introduce myself first, what I did. Um, I am developer advocate. Uh, my background is in economics. I study economics in the National University of Mexico, but I work as a I work as a data scientist and then as a product manager in the blockchain space in different companies. Uh, my first approach with the blockchain space was Open Zeppelin and big Bitcoin and blockchain community in Chicago, uh, basically. Um, I'm gonna start with another presentation here. Just let me... First of all, I'm gonna present what is RSK because mm, not the RSK is not as known in America as it's in Latin America because it's a Argentinian company. Uh, well, it start as an Argentinian company. This is the Spanish one. This is not what I want. Uh, uh, start as an Argentinian company, but nowadays we are a global company and or most of our positions are remote. Ta -da. Let's see. We can do this. Perfect. Um, like I say, we are part of IUB Labs. Uh, but or the first project that this company started was RSK. RSK is an, it's an open source project. It's a, a smart contract platform. And the goal and the vision is to create a new financial system and for financial inclusion and for decentralization. Um, the idea is to have instant payments and scalability. Um, or there is four 
pillars of RSK, that is merge mining, full compatibility with Ethereum. I'm going to explain that part. And the global feder federation that we want in the future is a drive chain and um, Bitcoin as a, as a fuel or as a for smart contracts. It's the same like in, in Ethereum, you have ETH, uh, we, have, uh, we use RSK. Also, because we are a small group, uh, feel free to interrupt me. Just raise your hand, make a question. If I can answer the question right away, I will. If I don't, I will just keep it and I will try to answer. If I don't know the answer, I want to make sure you have the answer today or later. But all your questions will be uh, solved. Mm. Do you know what is a smart contract? Somebody here have an idea of what is a smart contract? You know. <laughs> you know, just what do you understand? <laughs> Yeah, like most of <laughs> Yeah, like uh, the first, the initial uh, definition start with Nick Sabo and like you know the cyberpunk that is a movement who start uh, in San Francisco. Um, uh, but I would say like if I want to have few words that my students want to keep in their minds. I would say like a smart contract is a self-executing contract. Like it's self-executed. I don't need to execute it. Or I should try to program in that way that is self-executed. It's uh, allowed it to facilitate and verificate and facilitate negotiations. And the important of this is to kill the middlemen uh, because we have a history uh, of middlemen uh, doing bad things, in, <laughs> right? And the idea is like uh, these transactions are trackable and like we cannot take down or um, make this not happen. And basically, a smart contract is between two person, a, bo a buyer and a seller. Uh, Nick, I would say like uh, there is five. By the way, Nick Sabo is not dead because some people think he is dead. You can follow in Twitter. He's uh, sometimes very funny. Uh, it's interesting that tweet, the blockchain community uh, is in Twitter a lot. I would recommend uh, follow the conversation. It's interesting. Uh, I would say like the benefits of smart contracts are high security, low cost, low cost. Because if we pay a lawyer, it would be expensive, ex most expensive that the, we use a smart contract, right? Uh, is without third parties are private if we wanted to make it private and not violent. So what means that thing of not violence is like if we don't see each other and we create rules by coding, it will be less violence in, in theory. Uh, we people say like in the future we can create the smart contracts for our cars. Then if you don't pay your car, maybe in the third month the car is gonna return to the fabric by themselves. <laughs> yeah, um, and like you know, probably everybody know about Bitcoin, about Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, but mm, the blockchain, the Bitcoin blockchain is not Turing complete. Actually, we can just only use multi-signature wallet and time lock transaction. Uh, but when Vitalik it was, Vitalik was working with um, the core, Bitcoin, the Bitcoin core team, and he was working a new Ethereum paper, in a new white paper. And he arrived with this new uh, idea of a smart contract and people didn't like it, right? It was like a, like a fight of the vision of Vitalik and Vitalik decided to do their own blockchain. And, and Vitalik did a Turing complete virtual machine. Uh, and in the same time, I wanna say like uh, in the same time, also, Sergio Lerner create, uh, one year before Vitalik created a, a complete Turing virtual machine. Sergio Lerner is our data, sci data scientist, no, or, or chief innovation scientist. Uh, he created a, a Turing complete uh, one year before Vitalik. And he also was in the Bitcoin core and he was one of the person who um, was, Auditing Ethereum Monero, he's very involved in the community. And he, he, he saw 
how brilliant was the idea of Vitalik that it was working perfectly. And his idea was not to create another coin. And he said, okay, if this is working, and he did a fork of the Java virtual machine of Ethereum, and with that, uh, create uh, RSK, but peg to Bitcoin instead, create a new coin like Vitaly did. And this is what we have in RSK, is a Turing complete. We can have a smart contracts in the same way that in Ethereum, but we have a two-way peg that I'm gonna explain later. And now our virtual machine is very, it's similar uh, with, with difference uh, to Ethereum virtual machine. We are working in, in being the future 100 compatible. Uh, we, are, we are also working in the Ethereum improvements to be 100 compatible in the future. Uh, how works the two peg, the two way peg? Is like whatever you have in the blockchain, you can lock it in through the federation that I'm going to explain later. Uh, and if you lock something in the main chain, it's unlocked in the side chain. That means that you have Bitcoin, but you can run your smart contract in RSK. Uh, it's how it works in a simple way. Do you want to add something, Boitek, in that part? Also, okay, perfect. Uh, like I say, like you know, Bitcoin only allows you to have a multi-sig multi transaction, and we can do that. Like the, right now, the Federation uh, do a multi-sig transaction, and they log and unlock uh, the Bitcoin and the RSK. Who are the who are the 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 Federation are normally ten to thirty members, and most of the time are these people. You can be part of the Federation. Uh, some people go on or go in independently of business, right? But most of the most of the transaction, the the members of the federation are are those um, that are very well respected in the blockchain space, like Sapo, uh, Bitgo, Bitpay, Bitstamp. Hmm. I don't know what happened with this um, kind of already fixed it before but sorry uh, my apologies it's like percent yeah. yeah in instead proof of work or proof of stake we have march mining march mining that means while you are mining Bitcoin, you can also install the software to, to approve and validate transaction in the RSK blockchain. Basically, it's a proof of wall algorithm, the same, and it's also 266. And we claim that there is not an extra, an extra or additional cost to to mine to mine Bitcoin and the time in the same time mine RSK. Uh, I would say that the right now it, we work like uh, like a side chain and we have only uh, we have a federation. But in the future, the idea is we are going to have the federation more more miners. Nowadays, we have uh, almost sixty percent of the miners around the world mining also RSK. When I say mining, it's not that they create more Bitcoin. There is the same 20 million and that's it. Uh, when I say mining is they are validating transactions. Uh, but this is between, all, all the time is between 40% and 60% is moving. Because if you right now, let's say we all are in a workshop and set up a Bitcoin node and we, we join everybody to RSK2, uh, this is this uh, rate uh, is going to change. In the future, the idea is to be a hybrid, hybrid, hybrid model. Uh, to have miners, uh, more of the 80, 50 to 90 percent of the miners plus the federation. But the idea in the future is to have more than 90 for 90 percent of the miners, and the name will be a drive chain of this. Uh, I would say like one of the benefits of RSK is like, oh, why am I going to use RSK if we have already Ethereum or if 
um, and Ethereum works okay. Uh, I would say like one of the benefits it's time, speed, and cost. I would say that. And um, you can see like in Bitcoin you have 10 minutes, in RSK you have 30, sec 30 seconds, and in cost, uh, in average, uh, is a quarter of dollar per transaction in Bitcoin, at least during the weeks. Uh, in, in RSK is uh, the, a half of cent. Um, it, there is a very interesting, if somebody is interested in data science or fees, it's a, it's a field that is super interesting. I really like it. Uh, and you can check how Bitcoin, RSK and Ethereum fees change a lot. But I think it's good because, for example, with uh, Ethereum 2.0, uh, some tokens or assets can also move to RSK in the future. That is super interesting uh, for people who don't want to be part of proof of stake, for example. Basically, what we cover today is smart contracts, two-way pay, Turing Complete is a smart contract platform because all the miners, or most of the miners are validating the transactions in RSK. We claim to be the most safe and secure platform. Uh, of course, I think uh, we are creating a new technology. The fact that you are already here, you are pioneer pioneers in this technology, you are early adopters, and this technology is something that we cre can create all together. We need people from different backgrounds and different uh, visions to create a better technology. And uh, I think uh, um, we, are, we are getting better with this technology to being more, more safe, secure, we are bringing more UX, but we need you all to come and learn and to make questions and to have new ideas in, in the blockchain space. I think it is so new that it, everything is changing very, very fast. Uh, finally, uh, Bitcoin is the, the layer one uh, as a digital goal, but RSK is uh, the layer two. Uh, we'll be like, uh, we have Bitcoin is a, a blockchain, and, and RSK the side chain and lead, light, Lightning Network also is a state channel, but a state channel is offline, uh, but RSK is online all the time. This is because it's a layer two, but the difference between Lightning and RSK is between the offline and online situation, just to be uh, clear on that, yeah. So I'm interested in uh, a couple slides back. You said it says that the um, blocks go through much, much more quickly, but your confirmation time for exchanges is double the con recommended confirmation time for Bitcoin. I wonder why that is. Mm. It's, I, thought you, I thought it was 60 minutes for, I can, for, for, for exchanges and um, for risk. And, yeah. Mm. yeah, so you're, you're, you're recommending 60 minutes or 120 blocks as opposed to 30 minutes, three blocks with Bitcoin. So I wonder why. Um, okay, yeah, that was a decision that the security team uh, took. Because of the side chain? Because to be, okay, there, okay, you, it is, it was a decision that was made in security. Uh, in blockchain space, you will see all, all this all the time. There is like security and UX. is like in the whole universe of blockchain space, I would say that. And our team is very security oriented because mm -hmm, our founders are one of the first people who joined the team. They work as a auditing blockchains. So, uh, you want to add something? Yeah, so if you, if you look at this uh, and if you assume that there's 50% 50 uh, 50 of the Bitcoin miners are mining RSK as well. It means to achieve the same level of security as Bitcoin has, you need double the time. Because on average, oh, shit, yes. yeah. uh, you skip every second block on the on Bitcoin. That's, so, that's the kind of statement. So but, then, then the, the, the primary argument that going for, you know, as opposed to something like BCH or something like, the, the primary argument is not speed, right? It's programmability. So actually, so, in, in terms of exchanges, uh, usually you have it also in Ethereum. You usually wait for the blocks. 
uh, and that's what you would actually normally wait for as well here, because the, the sidechain itself uh, uh, works similar to Ethereum, so uh, the rollback is not yeah. really all that. Right, but, but I, mean, I guess yeah. I'm trying to figure it. So I, my, my impression, there's always for Rootstock, is that look, this is programmable Bitcoin yeah. to the, you know, the real promise of Bitcoin. Making it really programmable and making smart contracts native to, to Bitcoin. That's the goal. And, um, but this, I mean, what this says is actually it's slower oh, to no, make no, sure no. your money yeah. is not going to make right. sure your no, money's not going to get double spent or your money's actually going to show up. Mm -hmm. it's actually. But then and this is like thirty minutes. Oh, geez. can I? What is the other one? We have it's like scary. yeah, we have thirty in sixty minutes. We have. <clears throat> Six blocks, right? Or uh, no, in 30 minutes you have the confirmation oh, of three that. blocks, but in, in here in, 30, in 60 minutes you have 120 blocks. Well, but I, I, I get that, uh -huh. it's all like well and good, and that's underneath. But what does it mean to people who are using it? What it means is you still have to wait twice as long for the same security level. For the same security level yeah. as Bitcoin. Right. But so presumably the same time for the same security as we would have on Ethereum for the hash rate of Ethereum. That's that's I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm not trying yes, to I'm yes, not yes, trying yes, to bust your shot. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm trying to do is figure out okay, yeah. the like how to articulate the business yeah. model behind the behind Rootstock. And yeah. if they're gonna talk transaction speed. Well, that's that's one thing. If you're gonna say no, it's programmable, and we can do all this great stuff. That's that's another one. But this one, like this, this confuses me because it's saying it's slower, but we're pointing, it, but we on it's faster, but it's slower. Because um, because for me, like, you know, I'm not worried about exchanges, right? I, I'm interested in when cryptocurrency is used to buy everyone. For buying all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So what uh, what an exchange needs to be sure that the money is being spent is a much different um, different level yeah. than what I need to be able to pay five bucks to get a cup yeah. of coffee yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so if I'm if I'm interested in that, that's that's a different problem. Yeah. Than, and you probably don't need the same level of security. And right. You're probably also looking at uh, other payment solutions that would be like level two. On top of that, and we're going to talk about that later okay. as well. Yeah, and also uh, in here in the max max transaction per per second, we have like a ten transaction per second, and I think it also, for example, if if you you check only the absolute terms, we are fast, but uh, in that way we are talking about security. It's kind of it's kind of an interesting conversation, but I think it's a really good question. I'm gonna try to. To answer better the next time. Do you have a question? Yes. No, I just wanted to ask you two things. I was reading a quick article on RSK like not that long ago. And if I understand correctly, RSK is an attempt to enable smart contracts in the Bitcoin network. And that's like yeah. very important. <laughs> that could revolutionize Bitcoin as a whole. Yeah, you know, exactly. Right? That, that, that's competition for Ethereum, but I, so what I'm a little confused is the link between RSK and Ethereum. Are you guys building on the Ethereum? Oh, okay. I, I, I put it here. Uh, yes. Yeah. Here. I think it's this. Yeah. Uh, basically, <coughs> uh, okay, what I'm going to explain what was. was it. And you don't have to like go. No, no, no. Like, it, <laughs> just like as Sergio Lerner create coin quicks, that is Turing complete first, that you can create smart contracts. Uh, then, like if, like Vitalik created Ethereum, uh, and then Sergio Lerner saw his work. Also, audit, he audited Ethereum. He was one of the person who audited Ethereum, and then he said, "Oh, with this, with the Java, uh, the Java version of the virtual machine, he, he took this and he created Rootstock." Uh, basically, he did a he did basically a fork, and with, with, he did a fork of the Java virtual machine of Ethereum, the version the Java version of 
Ethereum virtual machine. And with that, he started Ethereum. But instead, instead create a new coin. Uh, the parameters that he used is uh, a peg to Bitcoin to, in order to don't create a new, a new coin. And uh, you can... So to, to make this maybe a bit more clear. So you have the RSK blockchain, which is basically if you, if you're a virtual machine, but it's yeah. open blockchain. Yeah. Uh, so it has the same internals. It, the only difference is it has a different consensus mechanism. So in uh, Ethereum, it's a it's a proof of work uh, where you base where miners basically mine and create blocks. For now. Here, yeah. For now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here on RSK, uh, you actually use the same proof as you would use uh, for Bitcoin. So it's also proof of work, but you're basically using the same uh, mechanism. Yeah. Uh, the internal currency is uh, RBTC, which is wrapped Bitcoin. It is actually pre-mined, so there exists 21 million of that. And uh, there's a bridge where if you deposit your Bitcoin on the Bitcoin chain specific address, you release the uh, equivalent amount on the RSK bridge side into your account. Right? And you can right. the other That's what you guys are talking about here. Exactly. Yeah. So if I had like 10 Bitcoin on when you launched this, did I get 10? RBTC? No. no, because it's not fit, right? Because it's, it's not a fit the RBTC. It's not a fork of Bitcoin. No. But, no. but you can take your 10 Bitcoins, right. lock it, oh, yeah. put it here, right. and yeah. start running a smart contract, okay. and whatever the results uh, go to and the... Then, and then when I'm done with my smart contract, I want to unpeg it, and I can dissolve the RBTC and get my Bitcoin. Yeah, yes. or to another address, of course. Yeah, but, but you need if to you have another question, sorry. But you need to trust the federation to get back for Bitcoin, right? So yes. you need to trust the federation to get the Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. The other way around, uh, I believe it doesn't require the federation. No. no. Why? It's just it, it's retrieved from the smart contract. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because if so you're a smart, let's say I could. Yeah, then it goes back to your original. Yeah, it's. You are doing smart contracts here, right? You're locking a Bitcoin here. You do your smart contract. Let's say we do a smart contract with you and I, and your smart contract say that your money is, is going to Dulce. Uh, the money can come to me directly. Yeah, but when I'm looking my Bitcoin, I'm looking at the end of the federation, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if one of uh, the end of the federation, take all of the Bitcoin, I can no longer have access and I cannot like redeem my if significant amount of uh, yeah. members of the federation conspire and decide to take your Bitcoins, then yes. That is for, for sure a, a security issue that we're working on and we're trying to resolve it and increasing the federation will one step and that has been happening over the time. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. a more decentralized solution is uh, something that uh, Sergio is working on. I'm taking uh, notes about your amazing question. Yeah. So if I have 10 Bitcoin bank and I have five of that Bitcoin in, let's say, five wallets, if I try to unpeg that five Bitcoin, does it just automatically withdraw from those wallets? Uh, I. If I understand your uh, question correctly, you would have to do five transactions. <laughs> so if I, if it was my five Bitcoin, I would have to track down the so addresses that right. would have all. So uh, there's a difference between how addresses work on RSL uh, on the Bitcoin and on EVM machines. Okay. Uh, on the EVM machines, each uh, address is you can't basically send easily money from multiple addresses into one in one transaction. Okay. So you need to do it per transaction. Whereas on Bitcoin, you can do that. So if you have uh, Bitcoin split between multiple, multiple accounts on the, on the Bitcoin side, you can in one transaction move all of them at once, but you can't do that uh, on the RSK or Ethereum for that matter. So you would have to have a transaction for, for each uh, movement from each account. So then, say 
I know to send uh, one Bitcoin, uh, one uh, BTC to one of my other wallets. Mm -hmm. But I slip up and I send the wrong address to our BTC. In the same way, how would that go when you try to claim back your original peg if you're not able to you, access? You, can't. you don't have that no. anymore. So that so your whole entire peg is I'm confused because you would still have the ten Bitcoin peg. It's your stake. It's it's your stake. And so this, this RBTC is a representation so then of you your can, stake. So then, but if you give them to somebody else, they have that representation. So then you should only be able to really fully withdraw money, right? Yeah. Whatever you still have. And if somebody else pays you to RBTC, you can withdraw those as well. Yeah, like if I understand correctly, I'm gonna make an example and I hope it works. Let's say I do an airdrop and I have Bitcoin. Let's say I have one Bitcoin for, for each of you. Then I send it to the Federation to change it to RBTC. Then I do a smart contract for an airdrop. And I say for each person in this room, take their, their address and their wallet and disperse this money in an airdrop. You, each one of you are gonna receive a RBTC, right? And if you wanna change it, you can go again through this process or you can use another tool such as CoinSwitch that is like a swap then you can just it's it's, it's uh, you can just switch and swap basically uh between bitcoin and rbtc that is another thing that is very useful but to come back to your question imagine you have 20 dollars in cash uh you have an atm which is this bridge to which you put the cash you deposit this 20 dollars right. into your bank account right now you have it in your bank account and you can at any point go to any atm which Again, here is the bridge and withdraw it. If you move one or two dollars to somebody else, uh, then you only have 18 or 19 dollars okay. and that's all you can withdraw. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, I think <clears throat> for now. Are you all side back? Sorry. No, no, no. I think it with this basically is. We have another question here. Okay. But sorry, for, for sorry. The non technical blockchain person in here. But historically speaking, to me, this is what sounds like when we went from like System 5 Unix to Sun, BSDI, BSDI, Linux, and et cetera. Is this a general type of evolution that happened there? Is mm -hmm. that fair, Russ? Is that fair to say? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Could be. Okay. That's, sorry, that's my background. That's just no, 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 no. Yes, yes, it's, it's not a really good question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the, the thing that I want to share with you uh, in order that you have some links uh, in the future is uh, this, you can go here just to bit.ly rsk devs. I'm gonna make this public right now. Thank you. Um, advanced, I think you have to do in advanced. Oh, no, it, was, it was there. Yeah, it was there, I guess, yes. I think it's public. No, you have to click it's Windows. <laughs> Not working. Yeah, yes. done. Yeah. Mm, uh, if you click here, um, and go to bit.ly bit.ly rsk devs you can find the, the urls who can be useful for you this is the main uh website uh this is like a or developer portal uh because it was an um, it was a really interesting conversation i had also here the the white paper i will say use the uh the update i think is more more interesting as an infomercial, uh, we have an ecosystem fund. Um, we have different initiatives. One is the grants, like uh, for example, you are working something in Ethereum that can be used in also in RSK. Uh, we can uh, give you a grant to continue working on that. Uh, uh, or you have an idea, whatever your idea, uh, that you feel that can 
help the ecosystem of blockchain on our scale, you can uh, try a grant. Uh, we have also the ecosystem fund. Our investors are willing to invest in other uh, companies, uh, global companies, uh, at, starting for 50K. Um, I think uh, I think this is like the, the minimum check. Um, the or venture capital is Monday Capital. Uh, we have an office in San Francisco, and we are over there. We are we hope to come back here and do a boot camp, a full time boot camp. Um, also, the careers. Uh, see if you want to send your resume, you can send it here. Here are my my info. Uh, this is the roadmap. If you want to check like uh, deeply about the roadmap, this is the links of the grants. Um, I ha I'm going to share with you some inter interesting things. Today, we cannot do a full hands-on workshop because of time. I recommend use Visual Studio along the Solidity Juan Blanco extension, the Juan Blanco extension. Uh, use Nifty Wallet. Uh, because it's kind of you can skip few few uh, steps, such as install a node. You have already all these nodes installed. Nifty is a fork of MetaMask, but just with different colors, <laughs> basically. And better UX. Uh, here's the link. Um, also, here I I wrote a, a pet shop tutorial that is a truffle smart. It's a, a truffle suite is something to ramp up your developer skills and create a dApp very, very easy uh, or very fast. Uh, and I, I, here's the, the link. Here's the repo of the link. Uh, if you have questions, uh, here is the support channel. That is the Gitter. Uh, you can ask any questions. We have support in three different languages today. That is English, Spanish, and Portuguese. And yeah, basically that's it. Um, mm, if we have time over over the week, and we have a demand, we can do a full time three hours like a DAP workshop. But for now, to give time to show to my coworkers other things, I am done. I am finished. And thank you so much. Check it. Oh, hello guys. Uh, I would like to see the, um, the practical part. Uh, I think he, uh, I invite you with the computer to do with me, okay? Uh, this, uh, I did all about me before. Uh, I started in, in blockchain and Ethereum ecosystem in the beginning of Saturday. Uh, and I love it, and I love to do smart contracts. And I started at NSK in December, two months ago. Uh, and uh, it's, for me, it's a pleasure to do all the things I can do in Ethereum. Uh, I can do now in NSK. I'm discovering a lot of things. So it's a new world for me that doing uh, things in Ethereum. And it's new possibilities. And I know a lot of people that uh, like uh, Bitcoin more than Ethereum. They like to do the things in Bitcoin. And because these people, I think NSK is exists. Because these people, um, some of them uh, don't like Ethereum like they like uh, Bitcoin. So they would like to do the things in Bitcoin. And NSK is a way to do it. So it's for me, it's a pleasure to do it with you. So we have a, uh, I invited all of you to go to this link because this is a collaborative head and I will put the comments here, and uh, you can, um, I copy here, you can copy after in our community, okay? And I have a Google Docs too, and in the end, uh, this is the Google Docs with all the tutorials that I showed you. Okay. 
is on the bed. Okay. <coughs> 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 Is good? Okay. So our tutorial is to use the remix and metamask that uh, are tools very, very, very low in Ethereum. And you can use it in a test net from uh, AGSK. Okay. So we have metamask. Uh, do you have metamask here? It's good. Okay, and the uh, remix. Metamask, if someone don't have yet, I put it here. Hello, who are you? We can put our name here. If someone don't have Metamask, uh, here is the link. You can install it. It's a Google. Chrome extension and create a new account. Everybody has? Yes? I think it's. If you need some help, you can interrupt me anytime and I will help you and the guys can help you. Okay? Our goal is to, to do the things in the computer. It's a practical job. It's hands on. So first, we need to, um, uh, in MetaMask, we need to configure our MetaMask to connect to the RSK network. So we go in MetaMask, in settings, uh, I, I have this before, so Connections, no. Ah, networks. It's here. Okay. We have to add a new network and I will show the configuration for this. Um, the screen. I don't have the option. So it's here. It's good for you, no? Okay. So the next is, uh, wow. <laughs> okay, now we are connected. Ah, oh, I, after you do these things, you can, uh, now you need to, to choose the AES cat test now, okay? You have to, to be in this network. And the next, next step is have some uh, habits. It's test net, okay? It's, it's don't value any money now. And with this, we can go. And uh, you have your account, you can copy your account. Everybody gets some money from the Pulsar. This is exactly the same as Ethereum. Yes. Can you go to the Pulsar again? To the... I am here. Yeah, cool. You copy and paste your address from, from MetaMask. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> to copy, do you have a, a little button here? It's very easy. And get. Uh, did you set the time? Uh, do you remember the 30 seconds? Okay. Uh, our is uh, waiting the 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Uh, I just have like, a general question. Okay. Like, okay. for me as a developer, why would I use LSK instead of just using uh, whatever is Bitcoin on top of it, you know, WBTC, um, like? Why use LSK? Yeah, why not just use uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum? Um, Bitcoin don't have as much confidence as Ethereum has. But uh, some people um, trust more in Bitcoin than Ethereum. Some people like Bitcoin more than Ethereum. And for this kind of people, this is very useful. And we, I know a, a lot yeah, of people yeah, 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 yeah. with this. Okay. Yes. In, in Latin America, we have a big conference uh, with Bitcoin, the LabitConf, and the, all the guys in LabitConf, they prefer Bitcoin. In last LabitConf, it was in December in Montevideo, I talked about Ethereum, about Ethereum 2.0, and the, for them, it's um, a little strange uh, a girl talk about Ethereum because the conference is most of them about Bitcoin. And the, do you have a lot of conferences of Bitcoin? And you have people that like Bitcoin but don't trust the team. Is this? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. I already got it. So yeah. Yes. Do I have a. Yes. Can you put a comment? Sure. Yes. I'm gonna, yeah. If somebody can do this action, I'm going to say it. Okay, I'm going to talk to Yes. Can you put the, uh, can give them permission to comment? Because they, they don't have... Or yes, or, perfect. I'm going to send them money because they... Ah, you can put in the pad. It's better to put in the pad, not in the dock. Uh, the, in the pad, all the people can... Uh, uh, yeah, in the pad. In yes. The, in pad. Oh, sure. I, 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 I use, I always do it <laughs> because of this. Okay, just put it in the pad. Yes, perfect. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check it. Check it. Um, how of you have the uh, RBTC now? Yes? No, okay. I have no? sent him. Him? And the others? It's Who good. Who don't have it? I'm gonna send it to Ryan. Who don't have it yet? Only you. Okay. In a few minutes, do you have? How much you need? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need a lot too. I only can get. <laughs> yes. I was going to send it to Oh. Yeah, I almost sent you mainly. Oh, I have it. Uh, I uh, before I have it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the same address. Um, this is Ethereum address. Uh, Ethereum address. You can use the same address in all the the nets. So you can use in the Ethereum hmm. mainnet, in the Hoxton, in the Gurdy, in the Unity, and the the test net of uh, RSK and the mainnet of RSK. It's the same concept. So, so whenever yeah. you if you create a wallet, then you you will have those always. Yes, so. you need to be careful to uh, where are you putting your money. It's very yeah, uh, no, it's a problem with Ethereum. We always uh, have to be careful with this. Uh, in Bitcoin, the ecosystem is different. When you create a address, the address is for that. Network. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but in Bitcoin. Yeah, I'm sending now because it looks like I only have mainnet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can send to you. I have a lot. It's, it's in the past. Okay. <laughs> I'm just having hands for some wrapped Bitcoin. Yeah, sorry. I just, I just, I just have the mainnet. Where is in the pad? Pad. Uh, yeah. The second one. The second one. Ah, okay. Are you putting the end, okay? <laughs> only because it's easy. <laughs> And what oh, oh, it's, it's easier. I am in the MetaMask, and uh, I use send to you. Uh, I'm sending RBC. He said, uh, it's here, but it's RBC. Okay, 
Yeah, we need to met MetaMask team approved. Yes. Logo. And you see, it's terrible. We are interacting with the Ethereum team all the time. One of the things that we need to do. I already sent. Uh, I'm sending you. Oh, God. Oh, are you sending less if you send you? Oh, it's the same in the Ethereum. It's all the same. Uh, the same uh, uh, screens, the same approval, and it's spendy for a little. And we can do the the next steps. Oh, where I am? I don't really need this. I'm here. Now we go to Hemix. Oh, 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 oh. Here. In Remix, we will do a, a basic smart contract. And the, you uh, you publish this smart content in a uh, RSK testnet network. I am in Remix. Usually, I have a lot of smart contracts here. Oh, thanks, God. Uh, I have only this. <laughs> And uh, do you have a RBC now? Can you check? Vita, can you check here our, uh, his address, please? Yeah. If his address is correct. Ah, so. We need to choose the environment solidity. Oh, yes. yes, it's the same of uh, Ethereum solidity. It's always the same. And we will go to the four button, first button. And the, our environment, it will be the injected web tree, that it will be uh, the connection with the metamask. It is the same in Ethereum. You can confirm this information because here we have the custom 31 network. And we put this information uh, when we create the new network at the metamask. Yes. Oh, go out. I already, can, can I see your smart contracts? Looks like I have other. Uh, I didn't put my smart contract yet. And this is my all the smart contracts. No problem. Okay. Uh, you will create a, a new now. Okay. Yeah, I don't use Remix. I use VS Code all the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so now we, you create a new file. And there you put the name of the file in our bed. <clears throat> to create a new file, we need to go to the second button here, the second button in the left, and in the plus sign. If here, you have a new window to put the name. So I go here and put the name. My smart content is created, so I did not do now. But uh, I don't have the name. Oh, I need to do, to do it with you. So we have a smart content, but we don't have nothing here now. I will copy all the smart content in our pad. It's here.
And I think some of you are new in Ethereum, so I will explain a little about the smart contract. Uh, our smart contracts in Ethereum, we, uh, we, solicit, we started with the um, what version of our compiler you are using. So I'm doing this in the first line. After I'm declaring a contract, it's called simple storage. And inside my contract, I put it what uh, I'd like to do. So I have a, a variable uh, integer, okay? And I don't put nothing here. So it's now it's a, in a private uh, variable. Okay. Now in other times it's not private. But uh, we have two functions. One function to set the number that I store here. Okay. And the second function, uh, I will show the number that uh, what is in the smart contract. It's only this. It's very, very, very simple. Okay? So we do it. The next step, it's compiled to be, it's always okay. So I go to the first, to the third button, and I always check this uh, out compile. It's very useful for us. And also I click in this button for now, for sure. And uh, I have a green uh, sign here, it's okay. My smart code is beautiful. <laughs> Do you have a question? No, I'm just trying to go okay. on the or something. No problem. Yeah. May I ask? Yes. I mean, Space in my free time. I'm excited to be here for sure. Yeah, yeah. So I can feel free to go to the one book. You're into the guitar and you have any questions about them? Yeah. Okay. I used to do like what I was doing. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I'm not sure if I wanted to. Yeah, you need to feel. Yes. Now the most important part of this, the guys, guys, now uh, you 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 deploy this smart content in our in the test net of RBC. So, um, if you be in the test net, so if you be forever, if the test net exists forever. <laughs> Is the fourth button? Oh, here, uh, no, here, fourth, okay. And the, do you have here a button? Deploy. You use this. And the, it, it will open a new window on MetaMask. Because uh, you need to spend uh, some gas, some R, uh, RBC to do it. So uh, the gas fee is this, uh, the gas fee is the same concept of uh, ATU, but the, this value is not the same, okay? Uh, the networks have the, uh, has different values. Uh, you are only expand this value, okay? You can confirm the transaction. And also, if you are in BS, there is a common code that you can ask what is the limit gas, uh, and it's exactly the same as Ethereum. Like if you ask how much. Yes, but uh, for the mix, uh, they don't need it now. Okay. okay. If, if the simple storage isn't showing up, then it will drop down. What? What does that mean? Will yeah. it drop Yes. If there's nothing showing up? No. Um, click uh, Ctrl S. 
to be sure that it's reading. Common S, yes. So that just put our code onto the network? Yes. Okay. And now we can uh, check here. Uh, first, they, we have the message creation of simple storage painting. And now I have a transaction, and the, the project transaction is done. So my smart contact is in the network now. It's a little difficult to, to see, but here, Hemix don't go to, oh, yes, a little more. If you click in this button, okay, and uh, this design, we have more information about the transaction. And copy the transaction, the transaction hash, okay? So I copy the transaction hash with this button. With the transaction hash, I can go to the block explorer from the test net and uh, I can uh, look for my transaction. It's very simple. I put in then another. Ah, here. Okay. Are you putting the pad for you guys? So line 65, we have the explorer. And I need to copy again my transaction, I know. This is the um, RSK explorer. You can search our address or transaction, everything. So I put my uh, transaction hash here and I can see the details of my transaction. It's here. So we just create like 15 blocks of the same code or something? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, it's very, very easy. Yes. Oh, yeah. No. Yes. Yes. Very good. I'm very happy that you are starting with this. <laughs> with yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I need to do it. Like. You can also find it super easy in Google. You say Explorer, Testnet, RSK, right. and you find it. Yes. 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 Normally, close it. It's here, it's the same. Cool. And then you go to our search and you yes. say your. I am here yet. It's the transaction. And it's confirmed. The contract is created. Do you remember the fee? We have the six here. <laughs> it's the same. It's like 0.005. Yes. <laughs> it's very, very cheap. The good thing about, I'm going to say, uh, as an economy, the good thing is if you do transaction over the weekend, it's ridiculous cheap. And it, uh, Bitcoin is ridiculous cheap on the, during the weekend, but RSK is super cheap like ridiculous like in business oriented people like you should know that so now we you interact with your smart contract here you can uh, check do you have a deployer contact it is our smart contract click this symbol and i have the two function, functions, the get to show my number and the set to, to save a number in the blockchain. It's only this, okay? And why they have different colors? Because 
the set cost and the given amount. Yes, the set uh, costs uh, cost something to because it's change the state in the network. But when I, I use the app, I need only uh, uh, mm -hmm. so to consult and do the uh, research in the, the, the transaction, in the, what is the, in the blockchain before. So I have not spent any money to do it. It's the difference of the colors. Uh, first time you do the get. Do I have some number here now? No. no. What's the default? No. Zero? No. Yes. yes. Right. Okay. And now I set a number. Um, what's about the hour day? Ten. Hour day. Set. And it just truncates decimals because it's a hand, right? Yes. Yes, uh, it's a uh, yes, it's a uh, integer uh, without signal. Yes, um, in Ethereum we don't have um, decimals. We always have uh, integers numbers. Okay, because it's for financial systems and yes. we don't right. want to use. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And here we have a new transaction from MetaMask. So we are using MetaMask to spend our money and to send our money to the network to interact and to deploy to everything with, with the smart contract. Now we you spend less only to use the site function. Confirm the transaction. And in a few, you can, um, hours we do a transaction, we can do it here. This is a, a call to get, do you remember the call? I got before. And now the transaction for uh, that I did, the last transaction is pending. You need to, to wait because I I do not know the transaction hash in this moment. Ooh, well, you are waiting. So we have uh, all the instructions in the doc, okay? Uh, with some pictures for you. It's very easy to reproduce after. And yes. So in your set, well, your private variable is an unsigned int. Um, so what happens if you want to store more than $130,000 or I guess? Uh, the limit is two, um, I don't know how to, how to say exponential, uh, uh, 256. Okay, so I guess my confusion is, I saw it in another example, you had UN256, in this one it doesn't have it. Is there a, dif is there a difference? Yes. Um, no, no, because it, uh, when you don't put the nothing, the, uh, it's the same. Oh, okay. UN, it's equal to UN266. Uh, okay. okay. 256. So you can only set it. Hmm? Uh, if you try to, to set a, a number higher of this, uh, it will be set, but it will be the opposite of your number. So it will be a, a little number. Because I, uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not doing any check in my smart contract. Uh, yeah, and your transaction, do you have uh, some notes about it? Oh, yes, it's, it's done. I can, um, again, I can check this transaction in the Explorer. I will go down here. I have the hash. Uh, oh, I, I closed the Explorer, okay.
this is a new transaction. Uh, do you remember the other, the other transaction said that I was creating a smart contract? In this transaction, it's a normal transaction. And what I, I did here, I have an input. This input has um, two things here. This is the function that I am calling, okay? This is the hash of the function, and this is the number. This A, it's an hexadecimal number, so 10, it's A. And I come back to remix, and the, I will call the get function now. And I have the 10 here. It's very easy. Now I, I'd like to put in our year. I like this year, 2020. I can do it again, it's very easy. Uh, if I check now, it's 10 because the transaction it's not mined yet. I have the, the transaction is pending, so it's not mined. And in 30 seconds, it will be mined, for sure. Um, I have two, um, I mean, I have two ideas to show for you uh, today, guys. One, it's uh, this idea. Other, it's using a local network uh, with the LSK Java EVM uh, and uh, connected with this with uh, GAF. GAF is the client for Ethereum. And I always use GAF, uh, GAF attach to connect with my uh, private network in LSK and uh, test the smart contracts. I think it's very use, useful. Uh, uh, Dulce uh, show um, in the other link. We have a tutorial with the pet shop. It's the same pet shop from um, the, 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 the guys from Purple. And the, we only have a one line different that in this line we are connecting to the RSK network in the Purple computer. Uh, it's because of all of these things, uh, I always said that, uh, that it's very easy to do the things. You can start with this. Or if you know Ethereum before, uh, it's easy. When there are changes to the Ethereum virtual machine, do you roll those up to the risk network as well? It's not in the same time. Some changes they are doing, yes, but they, uh, for now, they do not do the changes for Ethereum to control, right. but uh, they stay in the so Ethereum you, one. So you try, but, and, you try and implement the same changes? Yes, keep, but Yes, but not in the same time, yes. But we have the new versions of EVM uh, every month. Right. Yeah. So if you, were to, if you were to submit like really close to two different sets, can you tell which one would hit first? Or and yes, uh, it's a concept in the Ethereum wallet. Uh, every Ethereum address has a nodes. This nonce is not the same nonce we use in the with the miners with the Bitcoin. The nonce it's a sequential number in the wallet in Ethereum wallet. So if you submit two transactions, the nonce will be one and after the other, and the transactions will be mined in the the sequence. In the Ethereum is the same. And I have a client in, in Brazil with Ethereum last year, and they have, uh, they have uh, problems with this because they are using, first they are using Infura, and Infura uh, is a tool uh, where you use to uh, send the transactions if you don't have it, uh, your node. And uh, they are sending a lot of transactions. And they have problems with this kind of things, with the order of transactions. I suggested for uh, this client in that moment to have the, uh, his note, and the, they did, and they uh, solved the pro problem for that moment. But it's the same. So what's the so what, from the from a 
programmer standpoint, what are the advantages of using um, Rootstock over like wrapped Bitcoin, like WBTC with Ethereum? Uh, you could do this, you could, the same code yes, work, yes. right? Uh, I, I told you for the other guy, uh, I know a lot of people in the big Bitcoin ecosystem that trust a lot in Bitcoin, but don't like it. Either. It's, hmm, we had a lot of people with this. I love it, too, but uh, for this kind of people, it's very useful to use the RSK because they trust Bitcoin and they trust in RSK because it uh, is based in Bitcoin. It's a, a site chain in Bitcoin. So they prefer uh, so they the prefer a sidechain to, uh, yes. to the ERC20? Yes. Okay, I got you. And, now, yes. and it's an option. We have the people for, uh, we have public for all the things. And this is an option for the people who, uh, that like Bitcoin more than anything. Sure. sure. And also we are working, I think in the future in blockchain we will see a lot of interoperability between blockchains. Yes. Uh, that means uh, Assets can move free, freely or free between blockchains. And also, we are working in a project about the bridge between Ethereum 1.0 and Bitcoin. That means your token can move between the two blockchains. Uh, yes. This is my personal opinion about the future of blockchains. Yes. I guess they launch this uh, feature, this tool, the bridge between Bitcoin, uh, RSBC uh, and uh, Ethereum. Uh, in this week, and uh, we are not prepared just now to talk about, but they launch, and uh, we need to know more to to present for you. But they are uh, doing steps for this. Okay, and now we have Vitek. Vitek, uh, you show for us uh, the storage part. We need to have the storage and the uh, other tools other layers, other things to, to do the things, okay? Yeah, thanks. Is, oh. is this? Yeah, do you guys have any questions? <laughs> or? Okay, one more question. Okay. So I'm trying to imagine like maintaining this, like the development process. So like, this is a simple example, but like, what happens when you delete stored data and then you make it another value, you completely change the function, like how do you...
All right, guys, uh, how are you feeling? Uh, are you still good to go? We can do this very quickly and uh, then maybe have some uh, drinks and talk a little bit. Uh, so I'm also from uh, IOV Labs company. So IOV Labs is, uh, I think we, we didn't really mention this well, IOV Labs is a company that is building the RSK blockchain. Uh, and it's also building uh, something called RIF, uh, which is RSK infrastructure framework. And we are now also uh, uh, integrating uh, blockchain technology into Teringa social network, uh, which we acquired some time ago. So one problem uh, that <clears throat> Uh, you have is uh, in RSK, uh, we have we used the Bitcoin as the sort of value. Then we, on top of that, we put the smart contracts uh, the, on top of the RSK blockchain network. And then the idea is similar to how in Ethereum is that then you can build a decentralized application on top of this stack. But as we know, even from Ethereum, that's not really all that feasible. You need additional resources to build uh, truly decentralized applications. Uh, and that's something that is RIF. So we're adding infrastructure, uh, infrastructure projects on top of the smart contracts that allow you to actually build the truly decentralized applications that are truly scalable. Uh, and uh, these, this is, this basically consists of six base elements that I'm going to go into. Uh, Rift directory, payments, storage, communication layer, gateways and marketplace. And then you interact with the, uh, with the applications through libraries. So the first one is Rift directory, uh, which is a suit to manage all uh, identity services. So this means decentralized identity, uh, login service, data portability, reputation, uh, social recovery uh, for, your, for your keys, uh, and external service uh, connections. Um, one of the first uh, parts of the, of the Rift directory is something called RNS, uh, and this is a naming service. So you can associate very easily your address that we used earlier uh, with a name that everyone can remember. So nobody can remember this 0x701, that was how your address started, right? I don't remember those additional 39 letters. Uh, but maybe, sorry, what was your name? Maybe if you actually just put it behind Russell.rsk, I could now actually send you something because I can remember Russell.rsk. It's a pseudonym, right? it's a, it's a pseudonym that you can link to uh, your RSK address, Ethereum address, Bitcoin address. Similar as the DNS. Similar as DNS, similar as ENS as well. On the NS, you have to purchase those domains. Sorry? You have to purchase that domain. Yeah, you have to you have to get it. Yeah, right yeah. now we have a kind of frame that is free. You can register for free and things. So, well, this last week was like that. It's everything yeah. changed, but it means yeah. like you can register. Yeah. They're not expensive. No, it's really good. But it's just like the main. There's a limited amount. Uh, first comes for surf, uh, and you get it for a limited amount of time. Yes. Okay, uh, the second part of uh, RIF framework is payments. And this is a scalable protocol for payments. Um, essentially, one problem that we have with blockchains is that uh, there are blocks and block has limited size and you can only fit X amount of transactions there. Uh, and as the blocks get full, more and more full, it becomes more and more expensive to actually get into this block. Um, and you can only send certain amounts. So RSK, 100 transactions per second, uh, Visa, 20,000 transactions per second. 
if we want to get closer to that, we need to find uh, a solution that is scalable. And this is something called off-chain payments. And RIF payments is a protocol that facilitates this. So mm -hmm. the aim is to get lower costs, faster confirmation times, uh, support for any of the tokens that live on the RSK network and being able to pay with one token to someone who accepts only another token. Um, and the first implementation that we have is uh, called uh, Lumino. Uh, we already have two, two features. I think that's maybe not as important here, but uh, Light Client is something that uh, you could really use. It allows you to uh, just use your browser and connect to this network. Uh, and uh, there are some things that we would like to improve. So, uh, and the third service is something called storage, and this is where I'm very passionate because this is something that I'm actually leading. Um, one problem that we have currently in the internet is that we give all our data for free. We uh, store them on a centralized systems. Uh, if we don't abide with the uh, terms of services, or if we are not profitable, we can easily be deplatformed, can be removed from the system, um, and we essentially lost uh, access to all of our data. So the idea of Rift Storage is to create a censorship resistant uh, system, which is permissionless, anonymous, so nobody knows which data you store and which data you retrieve. Uh, fault tolerant, uh, so that if uh, the network crashes or part of the network crashes, you can still retrieve your data. And self-sustaining, so that there's uh, an incentive to maintain the address, uh, the uh, system by all the parties. Um, and right now, what we are, there are two good projects that uh, are already working on this in Ethereum space and outside of Ethereum space. One of them is called Swarm, with whom we have very close partnership and another very well known is IPFS. Uh, actually, let me ask you a question. Has any one of you used decentralized storage? Decentralized? Yeah. Sci Which one? SciaCoin. SciaCoin, okay. Has, <laughs> has anyone used torrents? Okay, you also use the centralized storage. Uh, it's, it's basically very same principle. Uh, so peer-to-peer -peer networks. So the idea is that you have uh, the storage protocol and you have the individual providers below that, but actually to a dev developer, this, this is irrelevant. You just say, hey, I want to integrate storage. And- uh, Can you explain how people are paid for, for storage fees? Yeah. Because storage is like it's supposed to be there forever, yeah, and that uses computing resources. That's a right. Term. Right. Exactly. Um, so there's several solutions, and actually, let me show show it here because that's something we've already uh, tackled, and that's uh, something we're uh, we're adding to the swarm network at least. So, uh, in order to to get uh, a service from anyone, you need to pay them for that, right? As you identified. And um, there's two ways, there's several ways how to, you can achieve it. If you have a popular content and uh, you make uh, retrieving this content paid, then it's easy, right? You just uh, say that uh, for every retrieval of this content, I'm going to pay this, this amount. And then as long as you are paid with, uh, beyond some of your thresholds, you keep these files and uh, you basically make your profit. The problem is when you don't have uh, a popular content, uh, and in this sense, uh, you need to go to a little bit more centralized uh, solution. Uh, for example, in IPFS, this is something called file pinning. So you pay someone to pin the files for you and to maintain the copy of that. And there is all sorts of mechanism how you can prove that they are actually storing that, uh, but but that's the idea. There is a, a decentralized option of this, 
uh, where you have a pool of pinners and they actually don't know what they pin. Uh, but it's a little bit more complex solution that I'm happy to uh, explain later on. Yeah, um, and that's that's actually a really good question because in, in Swarm networks and IPFS networks, for that matter, you have the individual nodes. So similar to in Torrent, where you would have the individual peer to peer nodes that uh, download and provide. In the turn? So, yeah, yes, yes, and no, right? So, uh, the incentives there is this tick for tag system and it's also a reputation system to an extent. Um, but we're trying to find a way, or we found a way, how to actually change it. So if you have two nodes that are downloading uh, from each other, uh, whenever there's, you basically keep them count how much they have uh, received. And if one uh, node is downloading more than the other, uh, you say, hey, you've downloaded much more than I did, pay me for this service. And you settle this balance on a pretty basis. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can apply that to that as well, right? Uh, you can have nodes that just consume, or nodes that just store. Um, and there's a big distinction between this IPFS network, where in IPFS you have nodes that technically store the whole file pretty much. And uh, as, as the file becomes more and more popular, more nodes start storing it. So you can retrieve it from more locations. Uh, there is no such concept, uh, concept in Swarm. Actually, when you upload something in Swarm, it gets chunked into four kilobytes. And they get distributed somewhere in the network based on a uh, hash of this chunk. Uh, sorry? And cloned. And cloned, but only within like their name. So there's a few copies, and then it's somewhat irrelevant how popular or not popular it is, uh, because you have more or less the same amount of uh, files stored unless some nodes decide to catch this. So that's a speculative part. That's a good question. Yeah, you say So the main objective of the whole RIF framework is to make it easy for developers to use decentralized infrastructure. Uh, and in terms of storage, it's to add the incentives layer to make the networks robust so that there's some incentives to maintain the network and, and obey by the rules. Uh, and to abstract uh, the the APIs of the different providers, storage providers. Right. Um, so the truth be told, uh, right now uh, Swarm requires you to run your own node. Uh, in order to really interact with that. Uh, so basically you're forwarding the request to your own node. Yeah, I do know it's a problem with an IPFS and I actually don't know how it's solved, uh, but yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> uh, 
All right, uh, so that's storage. Uh, the fourth system is real communication. Um, and here, again, the idea is to be censorship resistant and very anonymous uh, so that nobody knows you are the one sending messages and nobody knows to whom you are sending messages. Um, Um, no, so uh, it depends on your usage. So if you are using the uh, payments, with payments, sorry, with storage and you're using Swarm, uh, it goes to the Swarm provider. There's no redistribution. So um, really the communications idea is uh, that uh, we're building on top of the GDP, which by the way is a uh, library built by IPFS. Uh, but the idea is to have a communication layer library uh, on which you build a network that uh, anyone can use their own nodes and decentralized systems uh, to either create a direct peer to peer communication or a global communication. Um, and I, I guess I don't really need to go into that, but basically, if you are sending a message from one of your nodes and one here, uh, all what you do is you just say, hey, I want to send a message to someone who's uh, somewhere here in the network. <laughs> Send it to someone who's closer than you are, and then he again forwards it to someone closer than he is. And this is how it works. It's similar to how you would route in the in the um, in the normal uh, networks routing. Yeah, very similar. Uh, the nice thing is that nobody knows that he sent the message. It could have been he who sent the message. D is just the forward the movie. And at the same time, you don't actually need to put like a specific person, you can just put uh, a neighborhood uh, so that uh, when the node 3 receives it, nobody knows if it's for the node 3, it might be for node 4. It's just. Yes. All right. So uh, the last. The second to last service is something we call uh, gateways. So this uh, provides a bi-directional data transfer between real world and smart contracts. So one of the uh, problems we have in smart contracts is that how do you get, for example, let's imagine you want to build a lottery. How do you uh, get information from the real world into the smart contract so that smart contract can decide who's the winner? Uh, and that's something called oracles. Uh, they're not a new thing, they're in Ethereum, they're in many other systems, but we're just making it much easier. So that's moving uh, information from the real world into the smart contract world. Then we have something called triggers, which go from the smart contract into the real world. So imagine that uh, one trigger would be uh, listening to your address, and when someone sends money there, it uh, sends you an SMS or it sends you an email. Uh, but you can go more complex than that. You can say, if something happens in this specific smart contract, then this happens. Something like IFTT, if this then that, maybe some of you are familiar, that's the idea. And uh, the last bit is uh, schedulers, where you are basically uh, scheduling an action on the smart contract. So let's say you want to, um, you want to send a transaction to someone, but only after they've done something or only after eight hours because there's a reason for that. And the last part, uh, part is something called Brick Marketplace. So even in our decentralized model, we from time to time need to have uh, centralized uh, systems. Uh, one of them would be this uh, persistence files storage. So 
pinning someone who will keep a copy of your file and ensure that it's available in the network. Um, and this is what the marketplace is used for. You can advertise your service there, you can name your price, and you can uh, get into a service agreement with any of the providers and users. Um, so that's pretty much it for me. Um, just what if I, I want to re, uh, you to remember just one thing. Uh, Riff is something that we believe is super crucial for building a truly decentralized applications, truly unstoppable the code, uh, where basically you create a application, you upload it to storage, and if it's popular, it's there. You don't have to worry about hosting it. Uh, nobody can stop it uh, because it's censorship resistant. Um, and, and it empowers you, it gives you control uh, as a user over your own data because you can decide where to store that. And if you put something up in storage and it's not popular, yeah. then nobody really cares about it and just it's like disappears. Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, unless, <laughs> unless you pay. But I was wondering too, because you have to pay for it. Now that's a one time thing. You have to pay for it like every month to continue to see it from Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, and it's probably cheaper than paying to create a fake use of that system, right? Are you guys going to have people working on like in hackathons or anything like that? Or, I mean, because, uh, yeah. And then we've got about eight different use cases that we've thrown in to the hackathon. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely see uses of this. I don't know if you've got teams yeah. here to do that kind of stuff or not. But. So I'm not the right person to ask. Uh, I think we wanted to, but. Okay, what happened is so. Uh, oh, he is a judge, first of all. Yeah, I'm a judge. He's part so. of, he, he doesn't make. Uh, he doesn't say a lot, but he is part of the core team of Blockchain for Humanity. As a solution of for humanity, he's part of the judges. He cannot participate in the hackathon. Um, myself, I have to decide if I want to participate as a developer. And so I don't know what is. This is a company like we are kind of free. Like we can work wherever we want, or we can work in our office. And also we have this freedom to decide. Uh, but I don't know if so what to join. One of your teams and participate as a developer. Or I think the, but I think the question was if, if we have some bounties or something like no, that. We have ah, you do. We're one of the sponsors. Ah, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. sponsor right. you? State of Colorado. Oh, awesome. Oh. He's a Russell. This would be the um, the chief blockchain architect or what's your title? Well, I'm I'm a the digital transformation director for the state of Colorado. State of Colorado, yeah. Colorado is also going to have a bunch of fun activities too, mm -hmm. right? That um, can almost be like guaranteed work for those that. Oh, yeah. For, if, if you come out of it and, and solve them, we invite you to work on a project and submit code that we end up buying or putting out for open source. So, all of this is open source. All of this is available. Everything is on our GitHub. Every single thing doesn't matter if we do something for profit, such as we are working on a wallet. It's for profit. Yeah. yeah but the. the the repository is going to be open source. It's one of the our standards. I think it, uh, we can check the bounties and also if more developers want to use RIP or RSK or whatever or, or tools, we are happy to provide mentorship during the hackathon for sure. Yeah. yeah and if we're yes. if we're using if we're, if we're we have a solution that's for Colorado, yeah. right? Um, then um, how much extra overhead are we? Are we sort of asking for ourselves by leveraging this as opposed to having it something that we were, you know, yeah, to ourselves? Uh, to, to answer that, I, I would have to understand better okay. the okay. use case, but yeah, I'm happy to do that. Yes. What? You have published the bounties, but I'm a 503. I'm waiting. Yeah, they're, 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 they're putting it, they just now, I just saw the first title schedule, so. So, so ide ideally, yeah. ideally, it actually saves you time, but you know, well, there's I mean, an asterisk. I mean, so. I mean, like as far as not developing, right? But I mean, like, like time as far as how fast everything runs in the system. Yeah. 
it needs more. It needs so. more thoughts, yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, that's it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, already, uh, we have uh, like a first introduction to our stay here in the community in Denver. Uh, now we want to you know, invite you, invite you for a beer and uh, any amazing brewery that you have here. Uh, if you suggest one, we can we can go together uh, for a beer. Uh, sponsor the first one for Ayurveda. So.